Si lo dice hasta el taco. First of all, I offer my Satan Gandhavat Puspanjali, my heart like flowers thousands of times at the lotus feet of my holy master, my supremely worshipable spiritual Gurudev, Asmadeya Paramaradatam Guru Padavatma, Nitilila Pravisht Om Vishnupad, Ashtotara Satasishimad, Rupa Luga Acharivarya, Shila Bhakti Vedanta, Narayan Goswami. Secondly, I have for my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev, my Guru's Guru, to Srila Prabhupada, and to his guru and his guru and all the great spiritual masters going back I guess mm -hmm. and going back thousands of years to see Krishna himself. Mm -hmm. And finally I have for my pranam uh, to Pujapad Sila Yati Maharaj. Yeah. <laughs> Goswami Maharaj to Sila Paramadvaiti Maharaj and to and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis my pranam to you. So, I think that perhaps everyone here has been practicing this path of bhakti yoga for many years, it seems. Hmm? More than me. But, so what can I say? Hmm? But luckily it seems we have uh, two or three persons here tonight. Hmm? They don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> So I can say something uh, to help them. Okay. So please be patient. And after I say something uh, to help my dear brothers, uh, then I'll say something uh, for the pleasure of the Radha and Krishna and Mahaprabhu and all the Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis. So, Bruno. Yes. And Yashi. Just. Yashi. <laughs> there are in this world some extraordinary people. For example, can you jump in the air and make a triple somersault? No, you can't do it, can you? Are you? No? But there are some people who can do it. Huh? Some gymnasts who have dedicated their life training hours and hours and they can do it. But ordinary general people, they can't do it. <laughs> can you sing such a high clear note that you can shatter a glass? <laughs> can, can you? <laughs> but there are some extraordinary people who can do it, who have dedicated their life for many years developing, perfecting their art in that field of singing. Mm -hmm. There are some persons, they are professional divers. They can hold their breath and swim underwater without drowning for about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Can you do it? No. What about you? Also, no? Just one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, there are persons who have dedicated themselves to some field uh, and they have acquired some ability, some power, which is beyond the capability of ordinary people. Yeah. So, in the same way, can you see God? 
Uh, no, not usually. Uh, no. So there are some persons who can see God because they have fully dedicated their life 24 hours a day in following the spiritual path of prayer, meditation, surrender, self-sacrifice and obedience to the previous saints who have had also this experience and gradually, gradually their consciousness, their mind, their senses become purified and they can begin to experience those things which are beyond the experience of the general person. Now, you may never be able to break a glass with your singing. Because usually men can do it. Voice is too deep. Men and female can do it. And you may never be able to do triple somersaults in the air also. You have to be very, actually very gifted, athletically. But there's a wonderful thing in regard to realizing God. Everyone can do it. Not only can everyone do it, but that is the reason that everyone was born. This is the purpose of our life. All other activities, whatever we are doing, trying to accumulate money, trying to have worldly comforts, trying to get validation in the form of respect and honor, fame from other people. All of these things, they will come and they will go. And even if you acquire all of these things, you will never, never be happy. Hmm? Because we are not material beings. We have a physical material body and it has some necessities. But, hmm, only by meeting the necessities of the physical body, the soul cannot be satisfied. So the soul is only satisfied. The soul only experiences being born a complete when the soul has realized a very perfect, eternal, loving relationship with God. We say in Sanskrit, Krishna. Krishna. Krishna means attractive, most beautiful. And na means ananda, joy. So that person who is the totality of all beauty and the totality of all joy is called in Sanskrit Krishna. Now, whether you know it or not, you are looking for Krishna. Because, yes, yeah. because you go here and there looking for a girlfriend or the ladies look for a boyfriend or whatever. Yeah. And they're looking for that person who is beautiful and they're looking for that person who is full of joy and can give them joy also. But they cannot find the perfect person. So they settle for something. Less. <laughs> Maybe a lot less. Uh -huh. But even whatever you settle for, that relationship is temporary. And that's something we don't like to face. Mm -hmm. That time takes away everything. So no matter what relationship you have, time will, it will be broken by time. Either by uh, divorce or even by death. But somehow or other, it will come to an end. But that's not what we want. We want to have a loving relationship which is perfect and complete and which is eternal. That's what our soul is hankering for. So, that perfection is found when we 
realize the eternal service of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just as I am a conscious being and you are a conscious being, so nitto nityanam chaitanas chaitananam eko bahunam vidadati kamam. Hmm? So the Supreme Personality of Godhead, see Krishna is also a conscious being. And to realize Him is very, very confidential, it's a great secret. So sometimes people who are mm, suspicious or they don't have any faith in God, uh, they're very skeptical, they want some proof, show me God, give me some physical evidence of Him. God is not a physical being, not a material being. So it cannot be understood by material processes. Even if you cannot see your own soul, which is just a small part of God, how you, which is Anu, atomic, small part of God, how you see Vivu? If you don't know what even a, one drop of water is, how you understand the ocean? So, But God can be known, but not by empirical investigation. And that is true of any secret which is kept by any person. Let's say, do you have a secret in your life? Probably have a few that you would not tell everyone in this room. <coughs> Go on, tell everyone. <laughs> no, you see, you can't do it. Right? You can't do it. I'd rather not. You'd rather not. Okay, so there you are. <coughs> so now, if I want you to know what your secret, the secret of your heart is, then how can I find out? Maybe I can give you anesthetic, bring you into the hospital, open your brain, search, maybe it's in your heart. Open your heart. What it, whatever I do empirically will never ever yield the result of my knowing really what is in your heart, what your secret is. Right? The only way to know is if there were a person who is very devoted to you, who really pleased you so much, who became very close to you and serving you for many, many years, then the day would come where you would say to that person, I can't hide this anymore, I have to share it with you. And you'll tell that person. You see? So those things which are personal, and which are confidential, which are secret, can only be uh, discovered, not by empirical investigation, but only by devotion, by love, by serving that person. So in the same way, God, see Krishna, cannot be known by any empirical process. He, God doesn't care how much money you have, He has more than you. He doesn't care how rich and famous you are, He's more rich and famous than you. <laughs> he doesn't care how strong you are, He's stronger than you. There's nothing that you can do to impress Him. Hmm? But, see Krishna said, Bhakti Amma Pijanati Yavanyas Chasmi Tattadaha you can know me in truth, in reality, by devotion. So we are following a process called Bhakti Yoga. Yoga means union, meeting. The process of to how the soul can meet with God uh, through Bhakti devotion, a life of dedication. So this science is very profound. And if we meet a person, one extraordinary person who has seen God, who has realized Krishna, who is related to Krishna transcendentally, then such a person is called Guru. Guru means the spiritual master. And the spiritual master can teach us, train us, guide us how to follow the path of devotion whereby we gradually become purified. And then our Consciousness becomes very, very bright, very enlightened. You have a conscious mind, but you have a subconscious mind also. So, even though you like to think that you are very logical, very rational, 
but all the things you are doing are being dictated by impressions in your subconscious mind. Actually. And this subconscious mind is very crowded with material experiences of this life and previous lives also. So our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. If one will chant the holy names, this mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This vibration begins to clean away the materialistic impressions in the subconscious mind which are controlling our activities. Mm. That is called Chaito Dhar. Chaito means here Chitta, the subconscious mind. So that when that is becomes clean and it's shining, in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there Kapil Dev said, Swachatam Avikaritam Shatatam Iti Chaitasar. When the Chitta, the subconscious mind, has become smooth and clean, it's very steady. It's not oscillating. There's no a disturbance of lust and anger and greed. Mm. All the seven deadly sins. This is just a mental turbulence. So when the mind becomes peaceful and unobstructed by these things, then swachatvam, the subconscious mind becomes very, very smooth, like a mirror. And then bhagat vimbhagrahitva, it takes on the quality. Bhagat vimbhagrahitva, the power to catch the reflection of the form of God. So when a person is chanting this mantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 In the mirror of their very steady, pre-egoistic mind, there one can see the beautiful form of Krishna. And looks to the That's Krishna. And his girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Radha and Krishna. <laughs> Hare means Radha. Hare and Krishna. So, the divine realm is the realm of love. And one can only realize that divine realm by uh, having eyes which are smeared with the salve of love. Premanjana charita bhakti below chanena. Oh, I didn't recognize <laughs> Vishnu Maharaj. Hare Bhava. I didn't recognize you. Because I was wearing glasses. <laughs> Please don't be so far away. Did I make some offense? <laughs> Is there an asana for Maharaj? Yeah. <laughs> Maharaj? Would you like asana or do you prefer a chair? Yeah. <laughs> and keep a chair for my eyes. I become a solo because I just don't No. <laughs> Is it clear? Is everything clear to you? Hmm? I hope so. Okay, you can uh, study. I have a book here. It's explaining the basic practices and philosophy of Bhakti Yoga. So you can, you can get one of these. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Now I have taken care of my babies. <laughs> I will address senior Vaishnavas. So we have come to the subject that Supreme Lord is known only by love. Oh. 
What is love? Sila Rupa Goswami said, Samyan Masrin Ta Santo, Mamata Atishyan Kita, Baba Sai Vasandakya, Sa Prema Parikyotita. Love is when the heart is melting with extreme mamata, possessiveness. Mamata Atishyankita. Oh Krishna, you are mine. And this love, Sarvata Dwangsa Rahita, Satyapi Dwangsa Karane, Tarbhava Bangana, you know, hmm? Godai Prema Nigatate. It is said that love is such that even though the causes for the relationship to be broken are present, but that relationship is never broken. Hmm? Something happens. Someone does something or says something, hmm? then it's very easy easy to break a relationship. But love is that relationship which is so strong. It is never broken, but it's always increasing. Srila Krishna's Karaj Goswami Pad, he said, Atmendriya Priti Bancha Taribai Kam Krishnendriya Priti Icha Dare Premdham. The desire to fulfill one's own. Uh, desires for sense gratification to satisfy one's own senses. This is called karma or lust. So mainly we see what goes in the name of love in this world is really lust. If two people are pleasing each other, then they say I love you. But when one person is not pleasing the other, then it's over. Because they're trying to please themselves. So that is lust. But Krishnendri Priti Vancha Dari Premana. Krishnendri Priti Icha Dari Premana. To please the senses of Krishna only. To satisfy him completely. Without any expectation of return. Oh, this is called Prem. Prem. Pure love. This subject of love is not only studied by the saints in this world, but this is the only subject in the spiritual world. Vipande dampati jata brinda bana chatasa saritsa ki sabasu kliye vidya vishada viha What is Brindavan? Vrindavan, the transcendental world, is a university. <laughs> and in that university, there is a professor. And the professor of that university is praying, love itself. And in that university, there are two students. <laughs> Radha and Krishna. <laughs> of these two students, Radharani is top of the class. <laughs> and Krishna, he is also quite good, but doesn't get full marks. <laughs> Krishna doesn't get full marks. Radharani gets full marks. <laughs> and in this school, all the Sakis, the friends of Radha and Krishna, they derive the greatest joy in seeing the Radha and Krishna in their pastimes of learning about love. That is the curriculum, Vidya Vishara Viva. That is the curriculum. So, Krishna was thinking, I am not the top of the class. <laughs> I don't get full marks, but I want to understand the nature of love. And therefore, our Sarup Dhammadaga Swami, he said, Sri Radhaya Paneya Mahima, Kidr Shovani Aiva, 
Swadyogena Dhuta Madhurima Kiddishova Madhya Saukyam Chasyamada Nubhavata Kiddisham Veti Lobhat Tadbhavadya Samajani Sachigarbha Sindho Harindu Krishna was thinking to himself How deep is this frame of Radharani? I cannot understand it. I want to know what it is. He was thinking also. She is so attracted to me. She sees some sweetness in me that even I don't know. <laughs> what is that sweetness in me that she relishes through the power of her love? You see? Because someone appears to be beautiful depending on how much you love them. If you love someone, then they look beautiful. If you love them more, they look more beautiful. Right? Just like a mother, if a mother has a baby, and the baby is cross-eyed. <laughs> but still the mother is, oh, bad malocha. Oh, my lotus eyes, baby. Yeah? Because love is like that. Love never sees any faults. Not only does love not see any faults, but seeing the faults, love thinks that these faults are qualities, <laughs> attributes, <laughs> virtues. And also, if there's some quality missing, then love goes on imagining that there are so many qualities even that are not there. <laughs> this is the nature of the brain. Mm -hmm. So, Simati Radhika has more love, so she sees in Krishna more sweetness than anyone else. That Krishna even himself cannot see. And Krishna was thinking, this Radhika, she experiences by her, the power of her love and by the sweetness in me that she relishes, she experiences such a happiness. I am bereft of such happiness. I don't have such happiness. Echintarai Krishna Paramakotuki Bodhaya Ridaya Prema Loba Daka Daki. Srila Krishna Skaravaj Goswami Pad said, When Krishna saw how happy Radharani is in their loving pastimes, then he thought, Oh, I want to experience that happiness. And he became very greedy to experience that, but he could not. And that greed in his heart was getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Just like if you have milk and you boil it down, it gets thicker and thicker and it becomes rubbery. Mm -hmm. And then when it's hot, boiling hot rubbery, then bubbles come. So, body are daya prema, ducky duck. That the greed in his heart was so, so thick it was making a sound like a boiling rubbery. Mm -hmm. So, veti low bat. So, Swarup Damdaga Swami says, low bat. Driven by these three types of greed to know how deep is the love of Radhika and to know what is the sweetness in me that she experiences. But I cannot see. And what happiness does she experience through her love when she tastes my sweetness? Krishna had this strong greed to know these things and therefore see Krishna appeared in this world. Sachigarbha Sindho from the womb of Sachimata in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sachinandan Gauri Ki So now Krishna is joint top of the class. <laughs> now it's joint top. In other words, what Radhika realized in Krishna Lila? The brain that Radharani realized in Krishna Lila, now Krishna himself is realizing that same brain in Gorila. So in this way, in the pastimes of Sri Krishna, Krishna had some desires which were not fully fulfilled, but those desires have been fulfilled in the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But we should know that not only did Krishna have some unfulfilled desires, we discussed three desires of Krishna that were unfulfilled 
in Brajani Kunj. Mm -hmm. But also, Shimati Radhika, she also had three desires which were not fulfilled. What was that? But you know that one night Sri Krishna went to Bhangshibhat. Sri Mangra Sarasarambi Bhangshibhat Tata Sitaha Karshan Venu Sodaropi Bhopinata Sistinaha And playing upon his flute, he called all Brajagopis to meet with him. Leaving everything, they came into the forest of light. And they began to dance together. But see, Krishna is very, very rasik, very cunning, very clever, <laughs> and very expert. He had some intentions. Even Braj Gopis did not know what his intentions were. They became confused. But Sri Krishna disappeared. He abandoned them all in the middle of the night. And they began to weep. And Sri Krishna was watching them from a hiding place. Why? He wanted to know. Sri Radhaya Pranaya Mahima Kiddushan. How deep is the love of brethren? You see, when you meet with someone, then it's hard to understand how deep their love is. But when separation comes, if you are separated from someone, then when you go, as soon as you go, they forget about you. Then. But if there is love, then at the time of separation, then the heart is broken and the love begins to pour out. So see Krishna, to see how deep is the love of Radhika, he disappeared. And then from a hidden place, he was watching. You see, it is said that praying, love, burns steadily like a candle in the heart. So if there's a cottage and there's a candle inside, if you're on the outside in the garden, you can look and you can see that the light is shining out from the windows. <laughs> so in the same way, if a person has prayed love for Sri Krishna in their heart, then this is like a candle burning there, steady. Yeah. And, but the light of that is shining out from their eyes. Not only from the eyes also, from the face. They're shining, radiant. You know when they, they paint a picture of a saint, they always paint a halo. Eh? <laughs> this is the radiance of love for God emanating. So, but love is never expressed directly in words. Why? Because if a person will speak, Oh, I have so much love for you. They open the mouth. That's like opening the door of the cottage. If you open the door, then the wind of pride may come and blow up the candle. So those who have love, they never tell I have love. Even they don't feel that they have love. Actually. They feel. Premara Sambandha Jaha Premara Sobhava Jaha Premara Sambandha Krishna Mori Nahi Premaganda If someone has love for Krishna, they say, I don't have any love at all. So they never tell how to express I love you. And if a person were to speak, then this is just pride. And pride and love cannot live together in the same place. This is why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he said, Hmm? 
once you chant the names of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm? In a very humble state of mind, considering oneself, I am so insignificant, useless, like a dry stool. I am less than a blade of grass, hmm? and be more tolerant than a tree. You give respect to everyone. From your heart, respect everyone. Jive Savan Dive Jane Krishna Harista Mahapusat. Know that Krishna is living in the heart of everyone and respect them accordingly. And then Ti Rupalal Nam Prema Upajai Taralakshan Slok Shuno Swaru Prabharai. If you can chant the holy name in this mood, then pray will awaken for sure in the heart. So praying is not expressed outwardly. So see Krishna, he disappeared from that dance, Rasmila. And all Braj Bobis were searching for him and finally they could not find him. They gave up and they just began to in groups sit and weep and sing, exp expressing their hearts to a certain degree. And Krishna was watching and appreciating their praying. One book is said, Pranata Dehinam Papa Karshanam Trina Charadugam Sweeney Ketanam Paripana Pitam Tepa Dambujam Krenuku Cheshuna Krendi Rich Jayam O Krishna from wherever you are, please come back at once. Why? Because I am feeling such intense desire in my heart. <clears throat> and if you will place your lotus feet on my heart, then that desire, that pain of desire will be removed. <clears throat> Krishna was hiding. They were not seeing him. But in separation, it was as if they were talking to him. That is called the bhava, bhav karna, the ears of emotion. Krishna said, I cannot come back and keep my lotus feet on your heart. Because we are not married. And it will be pap, sinful. It will be very sinful. So Pratikobi said, Pranatadehinam papakarsanam. We have heard from Purnamasi Devi and also we have heard that the great Gauracharya has said Tasmannam Datma Joyam Te Narayana Samopunai O Nanda Maharaj, your son has qualities just like Lord Narayan. So if any living entity will bow down to God, to Lord Narayan, then what happens? All their path goes far away. So if you have qualities like Lord Narayan, how can you say, if you keep your lotus feet on our heart, that you'll get sins, you yourself destroy all sins by the touch of those lotus feet. Hmm? So this is not possible. Hmm? So then gopis heard Krishna say, but your chest is very hard hmm? and rough. You know, if a person is in ecstasy, then all their hair stand on end and they get to goosebumps, right? A repulation. So those who have a brain, their repulation is like kadamba flowers. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like kadamba flowers. Very intense rip. So Krishna, but uh, your body is so rough, I don't want, my feet are soft, I don't want to put them. <laughs> Gopi said, Trina Chara Anugam. Krishna, you are Trina Chara Anugam. The cows, that means you follow the, the cows who eat grass. In other words, every day the cows go to the forest to graze the grass and they're marching here with their hooves over rocks, stones and mm, very rough ground. And you with your barefoot, you run after them. So we don't want to hear any excuses from you that you don't want to keep your feet on the rough place. You're running on the rough place every day. Mm -hmm. Then... 
See, Krishna said, but I am afraid that uh, your husbands and family members, they may attack me if I have some relationship with you. Brad Gopi said, Pani Panarpitam. Oh, what is the problem? You kept your lotus feet on the heads of Kalya. There was a very powerful serpent with thousands of heads. He had 101 main heads and so many other heads also. And also he was breathing poison and fire. And Krishna came and danced on his head. So Gopi said, Pani Panarpitam. The, whatever, if anyone comes to make any trouble, like Abhimanyu or anyone, Krishna, you can chastise him like you chastise Kalya. <laughs> mm -hmm. Krishna said, but you, you said you want me to take the lust out from your heart, so your lust is so hot. If I keep my lotus feet on your heart, my feet may be burned. Kobi <laughs> said, what? Panipanapita. Fire was coming out from the mouth of Kalya, <laughs> and you kept your feet there. <laughs> so you are not afraid of anything. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> please, the fire of desire is burning in our hearts. Just cool it down, take it away by the touch of your lotus feet. <laughs> Krishna was still hiding, he did not, did not come. Up. Then finally, Shimati Radharani. She said, Yate Sujata Charnam Guru Hamstaneshu Bitashanai Piyadadi Mahika Kasheshu Taina Tadim Matasita Gata Taina Kimsut Kurpadi Di Brahmati Di Bavada Yusham Naha. The meaning is, O oh Krishna, your feet are so soft and cool and fragrant, like newly blotten, blossomed uh, lotus petals. And when I hold your lotus feet on my heart, I place them there very slowly, because I have a fear that you'll be inconvenienced by my, the roughness of my body. So now how can I tolerate it? That you are wandering around in the darkness of the forest, you can't even see where you're stepping. You may step on a sharp stone and thinking of this I've become completely bewildered. A Christian may step on a sharp stone. I am so bewildered that even for one more moment I cannot stay alive. If I cannot serve you, there's no need to live. But according to my karma, I have some ayu, some lifespan left. So because I cannot live, this remaining lifespan, Krishna. I'll donate it to you so you can have a long and happy life in Vrindavan. Now I'm going. <laughs> Radhika Utkanta, as if she was ab about to die in separation and donating the rest of her life. Yes, Radharani has no karma, <laughs> But she thinks she has because she thinks she's a gopi. She never thinks she's a goddess. I am Vrishubhanu Nandini, daughter of Vrishubhanu. So, Radhika was about to donate the last of her lifespan to Krishna, that he can have a long, happy life. When Krishna saw this, then he could not tolerate anymore. And at once, Krishna from his hiding place appeared there, holding his cloth around his neck, like this in his hands, very humbly. Kasam mavir bhutshori smayamana pukmukam boja. So beautiful. At that moment that he churns the heart of the God of love who churns the hearts of everyone. So Krishna came back. Now a question comes. A question comes. Krishna could not wait for another moment. When Radharani spoke these words, what did she say? She did not say, I am, I am very mm, lusty and I want you by your touch to take away my lust. She said that when I hold your lotus feet, I am only thinking about your happiness, not about my happiness. 
I'm only thinking about doing. So she expressed her love. Now, previously, we were just discussing. Actually, love is not expressed. It should not be expressed. Because that is like opening the door and the wind of pride will come and it will blow out the candle. Hmm? But in this verse, directly, the love is being expressed. So usually if someone will express love directly, it will be rasavas and the love will go down. But here we see at the highest point of separation, these were the words that caused Krishna to come running. Hmm? Why? How can we reconcile? Very deep. And this is Rasa Tattva. Yeah. So compare the first verse that we told. Panata Dehinam Papakashanam Tanacharanukam Sri Nitaitanam Panipanapitam Teva Kambutam Krinukuchesuna Krindirista. This and now compare this verse. Yate Sujata Charnam Buham Stanesha. One verse is saying. Oh Krishna, I am burning with desire. Please come and take this desire away by your touch. And the other verse is saying, actually, I am only thinking about your happiness. Please, don't step on the stones. You can keep your feet on me, but not on the stone. Uh-huh. Compare. You should know that praying love is very crooked. Love is not expressed directly. It's expressed indirectly. In fact, when Radha and Krishna meet, usually they don't speak sweet words to each other, they criticize each other. Yes. Stotram me vatatastatam prakataya chittas siddhate vatam nindapi pravatam prayachati parihasa sriyam vibrati. Doshe nashaitam gunain gurutam ke napinatan bati prem naswara sikas sikas chitayam vikriti prakriya. Purnamasi Devi said, You know the nature of this love? It has a life of its own. If lover and the beloved meet, and one of them will say some praise to the other one, then the other one feels sad. Why is he praising me? Uh-huh. That means he doesn't love me. That means he's neutral. In this world we don't understand praying. You see? If you meet some person on the street and you, you ask them for direction all the time, excuse me sir, what is the time? Why are you saying so? Is it night? Did you receive a medal from the queen? When we someone we don't know, then we speak very respectfully. If we don't know, then we speak very respectfully to them. But if there's someone very close to us, then we don't use so much respect. Eh? If someone is very close to us, we love. Say, oh, shall I get up? Okay. Mother Mangal comes into Krishna's bedroom in the morning. Hey, Shala is still sleeping. Shala means, it's a very bad word to use. It actually means brother-in-law. And it's an insult in, in the Vedic culture to call someone your brother-in-law. It means that you that his sister is not a good character. It's like an insult. So, Madhu Mangal and Krishna and the coward boyfriends, they can laugh and joke with each other in this way. Mm-hmm. So, when the nature of love is like this. When Radha and Krishna meet, then Radha and his will say, Oh, Vakrishwa! Vakrishwa Mahadev. You are just like Lord Shiva. Vakrishwa Mahadev. Why? Because Lord Shiva is the god of destruction. When you play your flute, you destroy everything. <laughs> the lives of so many gopis are completely destroyed when you play. So you are like Vakrashra Mahadev. And Vakra means crooked. You are also Vakrashra because you are crooked in three places. You know, Krishna is called Tribanga, you can see. His, his neck, his waist and his feet. He's crooked in three places. Hmm? So Radha says, you are Vakrashra. You destroy everything by playing your flute. And you are crooked in three places. Then Krishna stood straight. <laughs> Radharani said, Yes, you are crooked in three places the past, the present, and the future. <laughs> hmm? 
Then Krishna said, no, I may be Trivakra. I may be Vakrasra. Crooked in three places. But you ask the Vakra Muni. <laughs> There's one sage called Astavakra. That means Astavakra is an is a invalid. He's lame. And he walks like this because he's crooked in eight places. <laughs> Krishna said, oh, You call me Trivakra, you ask the Vakra Muni. You are crooked in eight places. Where? Hmm? Your hair is crooked. Rather, his hair is curly. Your words are crooked because you say one thing but you mean something else. <laughs> because Radha is insulting Krishna, but actually she loves him. Ninda api pramatam prachati pariha sasriyam vribhati. If she will praise him, if Krishna will praise her, then she will feel sad. What's, why is he being tatasta, neutral with me? Huh? And if Krishna will insult her, then she thinks he's joking and she becomes very happy. Huh? Purnamasi is saying, if someone sees a fault, then the love doesn't go down, and if someone sees a good quality, the love doesn't go up. Doesn't go up. Right? You know, in this world, if we see someone has some quality, oh, now we love them more. And if they show some bad behavior, then we love them less. So, no, love is not like that. Hmm? Love has its own life. It's never dependent on good qualities or bad qualities. Mati, intelligence, first thinks and measures the person's qualities, calculates, makes a score, and then loves that person. Or not. But the Rati loves them first, and then looks at the qualities later. And defaults, and likes all of them. So Mati, that is calculation. It's first looking, counting the qualities, and then maybe loving so much or so little. And Rati is spontaneous, loving. And the qualities don't make it go up. So Krishna said, you ask the Vakra. Your hair is crooked. Your glances are crooked. Mm -hmm. The way that you look, because Radhika doesn't look at him straight, she looks like this. <laughs> your glance is crooked. Also, eyebrows are very crooked, like this. Radharani's eyebrows are not straight. Like Your eyebrows are crooked. The way that you walk is crooked. Radharani hmm? walks. kind of swinging from side to side. <laughs> and trembling also in ecstasy. Hmm? The way you walk is crooked. Hmm? The way you speak is crooked. Hmm? And also, the way you wear your veil is crooked because Radharani covers herself with a veil. You know, ladies chase ladies, they cover their face. If a man is coming, which they're not married with. But Radharani has the veil half on her face and half not on the face. If you try to, try to look, you may have seen there's a beautiful painting uh, that my Gurudev gave instruction to Shamarani to paint. And Radharani is there and she's holding her veil and turning away but looking back at the same time. <laughs> so your veil is crooked. Oh, and your heart is crooked. So you are like Astavakramuni, you are crooked in eight places. So praying is like this. When there is a, some glorification, then it hurts. And when there is criticism, then very happy. Very happy. Huh? Just like if someone will just criticize you, then you become upset. But if they have love, it's completely different. Just like if here there's some smoke, mm -hmm. some smoke is coming, I'll take it away. Mm -hmm. But if that smoke is mixed with a guru, then it's dupe. Now it's incense. And it's, oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, the insults, the criticism, it's we don't like. But when it's mixed with love, oh, then it's very, very tasty, very flavorful. Mm -hmm. So, that's uh, Ah, what do we say? Yes. So the love is not expressed. All insults come out. That is the nature of the love in Vrindavan. So when Raj Gopi say to see Krishna in separation, Oh, we are... Our hearts are burning. Please extinguish our fire with the touch of your feet. 
Actually, this is not a direct expression. They are hiding their feeling. Just like, let's say you have a friend, and your friend, he likes chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. So, you invite him to your house, and then he comes to your house, and he sees that you're cooking some chocolate cake. And he says, oh, what's that you're doing? So then you say, oh, nothing. Just sit down. Is that for me? No, 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 just sit down. I'm busy. It's for me. <laughs> so then afterwards when it's ready, then you cut it up, and you put it on the plate, and you come to your friend, and then you put it. Then your friend looks at you, oh, so much love. You see, if you had said, yeah, you know, I went to so many shops this morning, I couldn't find all the right ingredients, but finally, after a couple of hours, then I found all the ingredients, and it was really expensive, and, <laughs> and I got back, and I've been starting to make it, but, you know, I ran out of gas, so I went, and I went and another gas, <laughs> and now it's nearly ready, and because I know it's your favorite, and I made it just for you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>? <laughs> And then you give him the chocolate cake, you think, well, he's trying to put me on a guilt trip. <laughs> <laughs> so if you speak about all the things that you're doing to please a person, then the love disappears. So the person who is intelligent and really has love, they will try to uh, do dissimulation and make it look as if everything I'm doing is for me. So actually, Braj Gopis, they never do anything for themselves. Everything they do is only to please Krishna. But to dissimulate that, they're saying hmm, that Ravana Nastane Sapayadiyam Krindi Ritschayam. Oh Krishna, our hearts are burning. You place your lotus feet on our heart and take away our burning desire. Hmm? They're hiding. Their feeling is, oh Krishna, we know that you are burning in desire, we cannot tolerate it, and we just want to please you. But hiding that, they're telling, Krindirich hmm? Tayam, oh, we are burning. Please come and place your lotus feet on our heart. Huh? So love is like this, very, aheri vagati prema sopava kutila, but moving like a snake. Hmm? So that's question has been answered in regard to that verse. But we see in the end, the words of Radhika that made Krishna reappear, she's openly expressing. Openly expressing the love. So then, according to the principles of Rasa, you will think that the love is going down now. And Krishna should not appear. No. The reconciliation is this. If there's a candle in your house, it's shining through the windows, through the door. And if you open the door, it may blow out. But what if you are in your house and there's a blazing fire? <laughs> there's a really, really big fire. <laughs> so then you're sweating. Oh, I put too many logs on the fire. <laughs> too hot. So then what do you do? I can't breathe in here. Then you yourself open the windows and open the door. <laughs> because you cannot breathe. So in the same way, because Krishna is Rasik, when he heard the first verse, he understood, oh, this love is so beautiful. But when he heard this verse, he could understand that the fire of Prem in the heart of Radhika is so intense, so blazing, that she cannot breathe. She's about to die. Without serving me, without pleasing me, she's about to die. And so the window came open. And she spoke. What was her real feeling? Babudai <laughs> Shamna, and the last portion of my life I am dedicating to you. Krishna immediately came there. <laughs> so love is like this. When Krishna is wandering in the forest, Radhika thinks, oh, his feet are so soft, he may step on a stone. I want to somehow protect him. But she could not protect him. She had to stay in her home. 
So that desire to protect Krishna, his lotus feet, not his lotus feet, only his whole body, was not fulfilled in Brajalila. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared as Krishna appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at that time, Radharani completely covered the whole body of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. She knew that when Krishna experiences my love, he will not be able to tolerate it. He will fall on the ground, rolling in the earth. In Ratiatra, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu jumped in the air and became unconscious in midair and crashed down onto the ground. When Mahaprabhu was in the Gambira at night and the doors are locked from the outside, Mahaprabhu was rubbing his face against the walls, he became cut and grazed. So, Radhika's Krishna appeared in this world having three desires, appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but also fulfilled three desires of Radharani. First one, that oh, wherever Krishna goes, I want to protect him. So when Krishna appeared as Goranga Mahaprabhu, Radharani, Antar Krishna Bahi Gaurang, covered by the golden complexion of Radharani, that he will not experience any pain. Second desire of Radharani. In Krishna Lila. Hey de hey nagarabara shuno hey hi murali dara Srivanartan Das Thakur said in the morning time see Krishna is taking the cows out from the village to graze in the meadows. And Radharani comes to her doorstep and sees Krishna leaving. At that time she feels so many emotions and she's crying. She goes back in, after Krishna's gone, she goes into the kitchen. And her mother-in-law, sister-in-law, Jutila, Kotila, why are you crying? And Radharani, she throws some water on the stove. Because if you put water on the fire, the stove smoke will come. So oh, it's smoky. There's some smoke in here, making the water. She's crying because of separation from Krishna, but she has to hide it. She has to completely hide it. But she doesn't want to hide it. She doesn't want to hide it. She wants to express. She wants to sing. She cannot. Mm, tolerate this because the separation is very hot and singing is one anubhav no? anubhav means a reaction to emotion and some anubhavs are uh, shita and some akshepana some throw you like some, one anubhav is dancing it throws you around dancing rolling on the ground and other anubhavs are shita that means cooling <coughs> so kirtan Singing the holy name of Krishna, glorifying Krishna, is heat, it's cooling. So when the heat of separation builds up, then there's a strong desire to sing. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare
vibration is rising, then it becomes cooled down by loudly singing the glories of Sri Krishna. And what? In Brajalila, Radharani cannot do. She cannot go here and there through the street. Everyone, mm, I love Krishna. <laughs> she, cannot, she has to hide everything. Huh? So Sri Nartanda Thakur said, when Krishna is leaving the village, then Radharani prays, Oh Brahma, why did you make me a woman? Female. If I had a male form, then I would go with Krishna everywhere and sing his glories openly. Hmm? So, this desire was not fulfilled in Krishna Lila and in Gora Lila. Hmm? Then Radharani had a separate form as Gadada Pandit. And when Mahaprabhu was in Navadvip, Gadada was with him everywhere, singing and dancing through the streets. And when he went to Jagannath Puri, Gadada was also went there, singing and dancing through the streets, glorifying Krishna and openly, without any shame or shame. Hmm? This was the second desire of Radharani. Then third desire. Karunam kurumai karuna varite sanaka sanatana vahani karuna kurumai karuna varite Shimati Radharani is full of mercy. And the joy she experiences, the love she experiences for Krishna, she wants to share with everyone. But... In Brajalila, with whom can she share this joy? Hmm? Very secretly she meets with Krishna in the flowering forest bowers. And who is there? Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, hmm? Lavanga Manjari, Manjulali Manjari, Rasa Manjari, Kamala Manjari, Nayanamani Manjari. Manjari is there. And they experience they get to become vyapt. That means completely pervaded from head to toe by the Mahabhava of Radhika when she's meeting with Krishna. But beyond that, she cannot other, share with others. But she wants to. And therefore, when Sri Krishna appeared in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then, Anarpita charim chirat karunaya vaktinaha karo samar paitum unnat ujwara rasam svabhakti sriyam. Samar paitum, completely giving unnat ujwara rasa svabhakti sriyam. The experience of Radhika's bhav has tasted by her maid servants. Hmm? Those are in the Radha Dasya. The Dasis of Shimati Radhika. So now in Goralila, that third desire of Chaitanya, of Radhika is fulfilled. Mahaprabhu is going everywhere and through Harinam Sankirtan distributing Radha Dasyam, the love of Radha and Krishna, but especially in the mood of Radha and his maidservants. So, in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is called Asha Jagan and Asha Mitan. That means the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu fulfilled Krishna's three desires and also Radharani's three desires. So this Leela fulfills, it removes all desires by fulfilling them. And at the same time, Asha Jagan. That means, Madhur Madhura Smita Lobhita Talu Britam Anupam Pavodilasam Niduvan Nagari Sing about the mercy of Gora. He's such a person that by his sweet smile, he is Asha Jagan, awakening greed in the heart of all the living entities. As he's crying with a faltering voice, uttering the names of Krishna in the mood of Niduvana Nagari, in the mood of Radhika, embracing Krishna in the Nikunjas of Niduvan. So, what is love? This is the highest love. Namo Mahabadanyaya Krishna Prima Pradayati. 
Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Nam Le Gaur Tushe Nama Shri Satchinam Go Hari Ki If I made any mistake, one of correct So we'll just end with a. I've gone over time a little bit, excuse me. A little bit over time. We'll end with a little kirtan. And uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he learned one verse from his guru, Gayanga Lajja Vicharetsa Asangaha. In kirtan, you have to have no inhibitions. Vilajja means no shyness. If you have. Now we shall sing and we'll dance. But if you have shyness, you're sitting in the corner, <laughs> hoping that no one will notice you. What is this? Ahankar, only ego. Only ego. Huh? If someone will look at me, what will they think? This ego has to go. Without any shame or shyness, jump in the kirtan and dance to please Krishna. And by pleasing Krishna, by singing and dancing, then this is actually the... Uh, Method that Krishna in the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given. Bajo Bajo Vai Chaitanya Nitai. Sudrita Vishwasa Kori have strong faith that by singing and dancing in the Kirtan and Gaur Nitai, this brain that we have been discussing, purest, not material love, transcendental, eternal, and perfect love, surely, after a little time, very short time, short, just a few moments, just a few lifetimes, and brain will come. Very soon. Go on, everyone.